Hi there, this is Morgan with Morgan Burke's Photography and Product Shop. Today I'm going to be showing you how to add rain to your photo in Photoshop. So this is the photo that I'm going to use today. I've already ran um, two actions over it to kind of give it that moody evening effect. Um, so, but adding those two actions made the real rain that was in the photo not as visible. So I'm going to add my own here. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to turn off these two actions that I used. Um, and as you can kind of see here in the background, you can see the little bits of rain. But once I added contrast and brightened a little bit, like they, they're not as noticeable. And I really did want to kind of get that feeling of shooting in the rain. So I'm going to add some back in Photoshop. So what I'm going to do here is add a new layer. Actually, I'm going to turn these actions back on just so I can see what I'm working with. Um, the first one I ran was Boathouse from One Fell Swoop. And then um, that one gave it the moody kind of evening look I wanted, but I wanted it a little bit more of a bluish tint, kind of like twilight almost, like when the sun's going down and it's nice and nighttime. So I ran Nightfield for also from One Fell Swoop. Um, now Nightfield I ran after, so it showed up on top in the layers panel, but that was just a little bit too purple for me. So I dragged that below the Boathouse layer in my layers panel to just to kind of let Boathouse take the forefront of the editing look. So hope that makes sense. Um, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the rain on its own layer. So I'm going to grab this little button down here at the bottom of my, of my layers panel that looks like a little sheet of paper. I'm going to click that. Um, I don't want it to be above the top action. I kind of want it to be between them. You can drag your layer all around if you don't have these actions and you're doing something else. You can um, just play around with where this layer is and how it affects your photo. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my brush tool and I'm going to select a mid-tone gray color um, actually a little bit lighter than mid-tone um, and then once I choose I just chose um, one right here off to the side and then I'm just going to hit OK and now what I'm going to do is right here in the brush panel I'm going to click down and I'm going to make sure that my hardness is at about 50 percent um, and then I'm going to make my brush small enough that it could believably be little drops of rain um, now this could vary depending on whether or not it's a really close up photo of a person, really far away shot. Mine's kind of in between. So I'm just going to um, use a size I think would look good for the photo. And then I'm just going to stamp some little dots on here. Now don't worry if these are a little bit too strong and unbelievable right now. We are going to fade them in. Um, now you want to be careful with going over lighter parts of the photo. In this case, um, I'm going over only the darker areas because if you are shooting in the rain you won't be able to see the raindrops when they fall in front of something that's bright um, such as her skin or the sky they're harder to see so um, making sure that you don't add rain over brighter spots in your photo will kind of enhance the believability factor you'd only see the rain um, if it's in front of a dark area you'd be able to see those drops so again I'm just gonna stamp all over the place and you can remove some of these later if you don't like how many there are. Right now I'm just adding some in so I can make sure we have enough. Um, you can put another one over the hair if you want. Whatever you think looks good. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this layer. I'm just going to drag it down over that sheet of paper and let go. Um, and then I'm going to turn one of these off. That's just in case I need it later. So I'm going to go back down to this first one that we added the rain. And I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, and then I'm going to select Motion Blur and there you can see it's already gotten started. Um, in this case I do want it to come from above but I kinda wanna tilt it a little bit over to the right so I'm gonna do it like 87 degrees maybe 84 just so it comes in slightly at an angle and then you can play around with the distance like how much you want those raindrops to blur. Do you want them to be like super long streaks? Um, do you want them to be tiny, uh, tinier drops um, with just slight blur? That, that choice is up to you. Um, I think that maybe I'll do one kind of longer. Again, you can play with this effect. So we're going to do one kind of longer and I'm going to tilt it just a little bit more. Again, this is all personal preference. So I'm going to hit OK and then I'm going to turn on my other rain layer and kind of looks a little funky. We are going to go to filter motion blur again. Blur, motion blur. And this is again on that second layer. 
Um, now the settings are the same as you used last time, so it's just going to look like darker rain. But in this case, I'm going to lower the distance in this one. I want a couple drops to kind of be caught in the act of dropping. And so then I'm going to hit OK. And now this time, so that the drops aren't right on top of each other, I'm going to grab my Move tool and just move these over a little bit. Um, and now I'm going to add a layer mask. So I'm just going to invert this layer mask. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. To add a layer mask, you just grab this little button down here at the bottom of your layers panel that's the rectangle with the circle inside. Once you do that, a white box will show up on your layer, and that's your layer mask. Um, I'm going to fill this layer mask with black, so I'm hiding all of that rain from the photo for now, just the second layer of rain that we did. I'm going to hit Control or Command I on my keyboard, and that's hiding those last um, little raindrops we did. And now what you can do with your brush is you can paint a few of those back in. So let's say you wanted to add one there, and this just kind of makes them look different in certain spots, and so you can add these in where you think you want them. I'm just kind of painting randomly here, hoping some will show up. Let's see. There you go. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so there is that, and um, you can actually come back over here to your layer, click it, and go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur, and you can blur those a little bit more if you want to. Excuse me, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, you can blur them a little bit more if you didn't think that you um, did enough that second time around. You can go back in and just make them look um, however you think makes them look believable. So just kind of play around with the distance, the angle, um, whatever you think looks good. And then when you are satisfied with your effect, you can hit OK. <coughs> Excuse me. OK, so an additional step I did was I added another blank layer. And then I made my brush really large at about 10% opacity. So I'm just going to hit the 1 on my keyboard to change the opacity. <clears throat> and then I just stamped one right there and that just kind of gives it a little bit of haze almost like a, a raindrop landed on my lens um, now this again is personal preference if you don't like that look you definitely don't have to do it this was just something I did in the, the image just to add a little bit more drama and kind of pull the eye more towards the center of the photo where the subject is now what I did was I hit control and held down all three of those rain layers and put them in a group okay so I'm gonna hit control G to group them together and now you have your rain in one layer and now is when you can experiment with dragging that to different locations on your layers panel. You can drag it above your actions and see what you think. I feel like that's a little bit too dark, too obviously noticeable. Um, so I'm going to drag it below and see what I think of that. And that's not as noticeable as I want. So I think right in the middle is good. Um, and then if it's still not perfect, you can always um, lower the opacity of this layer and play with it until you think it looks natural. Um, you can also add a layer mask to this group and then you can paint, I'm gonna lower the brush hardness, you can remove any of these raindrops that you think are bothersome. If you don't like the one over the top of her hair you can paint it out, you can fade it, um, or you can hit 100% opacity with your brush. I'm gonna do that by hitting zero on my keyboard and you can paint those out wherever you want. If you feel like um, some of them might be a little bit too much um, you can paint some out so it's a little bit more spaced through. So um, actually, I'm going to paint that one back in. OK, so yeah. And you can also open that group back up and adjust each layer individually. You can add a layer mask to each of those um, if that works better for you. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, you can email me at morgan at morganburks.com. Or you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash morganburksphotography. Thank you so much, and have a great day.